Welcome to Chaos and Climate. My name is Frank Mitwinner and I'm a professor and air quality specialist in the Department of Animal Science at UC Davis. The discussion of whether cows or cars produce more greenhouse gases is one that is in the media almost daily. I will start talking about cows. Now, in contrast to humans, cows have a four-chambered stomach. And the first one is massive. It's the so-called rumen. It has a volume of 50 gallons, or the volume of your bathtub. The reason why it's so big is because ruminant animals such as cows graze or eat, and what they eat is just pretty much swallowed quickly and then later brought up to be chewed again. A process called chewing the cud or rumination. And it is microbes in the rumen, in that large stomach, that enable the ruminant to digest the food. So it's not the ruminant animal itself, it's microbes, bacteria and others, that take the feedstuff, they break it down and make it into animal source food, such as milk or meat. And that's a beautiful thing, because think about it this way. Think back to your high school days, where your teacher explained to you how photosynthesis worked. The process by which plants take CO2 carbon dioxide out of the air, a process for which they also need sunlight, and then these plants produce carbohydrates and they produce oxygen. That oxygen is then released. But the carbohydrates are that carbon part of the carbohydrate is a result of the plant taking on the CO2 from the air. So now that plant is being eaten by a cow. And when the cow digests it, a certain portion of that carbon in the plant is released as methane. And methane is a carbon-containing molecule. That methane, and that's really important, in contrast to CO2, that methane has a very short lifespan. In fact, it's only in the atmosphere for 10 years. And after 10 years, that methane is converted into CO2 again. What's interesting is, that the CO2 that was at the beginning of the story, the amount of CO2 that went into the plants, is the same amount of CO2 that results after methane is converted into CO2 again. So we are not adding in this cow carbon cycle, we are not adding new carbon to the atmosphere. If you as a farmer or you as a region or a state don't add additional livestock to your farm or your, your locality, then that means that you're not adding additional methane to the atmosphere. If you're not adding additional methane to the atmosphere, then you're not adding additional global warming. And this is a point that's very critical. Because most everybody, when talking about methane from livestock, assumes that that methane will just build up. And the more cows you have, or the longer you have cows, the more methane is in the atmosphere, which is false. There's a process in the atmosphere by which methane is destroyed at an equal rate at which it's produced. And that process is called hydroxyoxidation. And this is unique. This is different from what happens to other greenhouse gases such as CO2 or nitrous oxide. Okay? So a livestock cycle of carbon is distinctively different from a fossil fuel related greenhouse gas. Why? Let me explain it to you. Okay, so let's go back to the question of how cows compare to cars. And this time we talk about the cars. So, by the way, it's not just cars, of course. It's all those sources using fossil fuels. And that's cars, trucks, trains, planes, ships, and so on. So, they all have one thing in common, and that is that they use fossil fuel-derived carbon. And what that is, is oil, coal and gas that was stored in the ground for a very long time. And throughout a very short period of time, we've extracted that and now we are burning it. What's important to note too is that once we burn that fossil fuel, the resulting gas is carbon dioxide, CO2. And what's special about CO2, that's the gas you and I are exhaling right now, is that this gas has a lifespan of a thousand years. Meaning every time that you've ever driven a vehicle, uh, more than alone or anytime you burn something you put out CO2 into the atmosphere and all of that is still there and every time the Sun hits those carbon molecules 
these carbon molecules heat up, trap the heat and continue to contribute to global warming. Remember what I said about cows. What they put out in methane has a lifespan of 10 years. CO2, 1000 years. CO2 has one way and one way only, and that's up. Methane stays stable as long as your livestock herd stays stable.